What's going on everyone? So I'm out here halibut fishing right now, but I wanted to take some time to talk about my favorite season that's coming up, and that's salmon season. So right over here is the Pacific uh, Ocean. And we got king salmon. Um, so I want to talk a little bit about my experience and what I've learned and share that with you. Um, so the season runs from April, th April through October, and that's if there's no closures, uh, postponements in it. That's the full season. This year in 2020, we're expecting a full season. Uh, last year we had one as well. There was a little closure in May for a few weeks. Um, so yeah, so when the season starts in April, the salmon, they're living really far out, 10, 15 miles generally. So if you wanna go for them, you're gonna have to you know, go that far out to get them. So this is an example of how far you have to go. This is a spot I went last year. Fairlawn Islands, as you can see up there, that's 30 miles from the Golden Gate Bridge. That's a good 15, 20 miles out from shore there. I launched at Half Moon Bay. Um, so this is out, us out of the fishing grounds now. Uh, you can see the weather's really nice. I believe this day the swells were like two and a half and the wind you know, for the high on shore was like three, four miles per hour. Um, I only go out you know, that far on uh, when the weather and conditions are that nice. When you get out there, there's lots of boats too, which uh, make you feel a little bit more comfortable. So you can see here, uh, Stephen caught a nice, I think that was a 27 or 28 incher. Um, yeah, so it was a good fish. Um, as the season progresses, they move closer into shore as they head up, you know, the Sacramento River. Um, so starting July, August, they get closer to shore, maybe five miles out. Um, and then when you get August, September, they're in 40, 50 feet of water along the coast right here. So this is underwater footage from when I was fishing in 42 feet of water. Uh, you can see the, the sand down there. Uh, this is footage from back in like, August 31st of last year. So the first uh, YouTube footage I put out, uh, kind of what started this whole thing. So it's definitely an amateur video, but there's some pretty cool underwater footage that I'd recommend checking out when you're done with this video. Um, you know, that's most people's favorite time to fish for them. If I get a bite, let me know, okay? Um, so, and then as the season progresses, the fish get bigger. So when it starts in April and you're fishing far out there, you're catching salmon 20 to 30 inches um, and they're not as fat. So that's the salmon that's caught from earlier in the season. You can see it's smaller and skinnier, uh, probably, you know, seven pounds. Progresses and they move closer to shore, the spawners come in. That's when you get, you know, nice 30 plus pounders and all the big fish. So now there's a big salmon. That's a 22 pounder that was caught in 50 feet of water. Uh, middle of September, you know, along the coast, it's going to go up the Sacramento River to spawn. Uh, you can see those fillets there, the hot wheel for scale, show you how big it is. And look at all the fat on those fillets. I mean, it doesn't get any better than that for salmon. Um, so you might be asking, it's a big ocean, how do I find the fish? So um, I like to, I guess your best option is to follow a party boat. They generally leave at six in the morning. And when I mean follow them, like don't be close, don't be right next to them, stay a distance, stay a few football fields away. You don't need to get close. Generally, you can see them pretty far away, but they're gonna go to where the salmon are. And when you get up to that spot, generally there's like 40, 50, 60, 70 boats out there. All right, here I am out in 10 mile. Man, a lot of boats out here today. <clears throat> Got two really nice ones so far, 20 pounder and a 15 pounder. Um, so that's where the fish are going to be. You know, there's schools, there's a few schools out there. You want to, you know, if, if someone with experience like the charter boat, you follow them out, you're going to find them quickly. Sometimes you're not out by six, sometimes the charter boat's not going, whatever. You need to find them yourself. Uh, so you want to find birds, uh, that's going to be your best cue. We'll look for the pelicans flying up above, the different seabirds. Um, look for birds diving. Birds sitting on the water, a lot of the times they're sitting on top of bait, but the bait's too far down. Which generally means there's not fish they're feeding. You still want to fish that area, especially if you're not picking up bait on your you know, fish finder. Fish it out for a little bit. So this is the spot we came up on. There was just so many birds there. Um, so we stopped, we trolled for a while, 
Never got a bite, nothing. You know, the birds weren't diving. They weren't really feeding. Um, take a look what happens, though. Oh, oh and I was right on camera. Not that all on camera. <laughs> but the best cue is if you see birds diving, because that means that there's fish pushing them up. If you're out in the ocean here, it usually always means that salmon. Uh, so that would be a good cue. The other thing is, is look for other boats. Maybe they got some intel on a spot sure everyone can be thinking that but fish it for an hour um you're networking watch the other boats everyone keeps their nets straight up you see nets drop people are catching fish you're going to stay that area you don't see any fish for an hour two hours go try another spot um so that's that's my cue on how to find the fish so now let's say you, if you're in the area people are hooking up now what um so in the beginning of the year it's 300 feet of water out there these fish can be anywhere from 20 feet down to you know 280 feet so the depth that's your first cue you got to find out what depth these fish are at they're going to be in kind of a smaller range you know if it's 300 feet of water you got to get within you have a 30 foot range roughly um if you're not in that area you're not going to catch one so um if you have downriggers you know, try different depths. Don't don't start both off at the same. Um, if you follow a party boat out or you see party boats, the people in the front of the boat, their lines aren't as deep. They're usually like 35 to 50 feet. The people in the back of the boat, they're the deep ones. They're 100 feet deep, you know, roughly. So watch who's catching the fish on the party boat. That'll help you gauge how deep the fish are. Back of the boat, fish are deep. Front of the boat, fish aren't as deep. Um, if you're going by a boat, you know, ask, any luck yet? If they say, yeah, don't ask, hey, what bait? You ask, what depth? That's how, you, that's how you're gonna get a fish, um, by finding out what depth they're at. Okay, so now you've, you know, you figured out what depth they're at, let's talk about your bait options. Um, I believe there's really two options. You go with the frozen anchovy or heron on like a crippled anchovy rig, or the metal rod that goes through it with a little bend. Basically a frozen anchovy that you're trolling around. Um, you can do that with a flasher. Um, I would recommend it. These things don't add any drag to your weight. This is just a little six incher. You can go bigger. This one works fine for me. This is what I used all last year. I like green. Um, so throw one of those on. All right, so here's our salmon rig again. Crippled anchovy. So that's footage I took. That's about 120 feet down. Um, that's about the perfect rotation on a crippled anchovy. That's what you want it to look like right there. So for, uh, your other option for bait would be this Apex. I would go with watermelon. This is kind of just the go-to lure for this area. Um, it comes in a four and a half or a five and a half. Most people prefer four and a half. This is a five and a half. They both work. Um, if you're newer to salmon fishing, you don't have experience, you want to go try it, use these because it's just something else that you gotta have experience on with the crippled anchovy. If you don't have the right spin, you're not gonna catch anything. Uh, you're making it come off, different things like that. So use one of these. Um, I would say the only disadvantage is if you get a bite or maybe you're not sure, you can't see if your bait got scratched versus the anchovy you can, but these catch the same ratio of fish as the anchovy does for the most part, it's so close. I've, I've had a lot of luck with these. So if you're newer, use this. Uh, the crippled anchovy, you know, that's something fun as well. Uh, so now, fish is on, what do you do? Um, don't run to the pole and yank it and set the hook. You want to um, just go to the pole, pick it up, and just start reeling. Apply pressure, and you're using barbless hooks, and so as long as you keep tension on, the fish is going to come loose. But if you pick up the pole and drop the rod tip real quick, fish can come loose just keep the line tight so you can see the salmon biting the anchovy there and taking the line off the downrigger that's the snap back um, and then I see it and go up over there pick up the pole real fast and you can see I keep the rod tip up and the line tight that's what you got to do just make sure you keep the line tight and tension um, so a lot of boats uh, they keep moving when the fish is on especially if you're like on a party boat they don't slow down 
Um, if you're on a, a private boat, it's recommended to keep going. Me personally, when I hook the fish, I slow the boat down a little bit. I keep going. That keeps the pressure out. You got a hundred yards of line out potentially. Um, so when the fish gets closer to shore, it's pretty cool that it's starting to rain, isn't it? When it gets closer to shore, that's when I like to, uh, or sorry, when it gets closer to the boat, that's when I'll maybe go to neutral. We just, you know, 30 feet out, I see the fish, we're about to net it. I'm gonna keep the rod tight, the line. Um, I'm not concerned at that point. I don't wanna yank the, the hook out of the fish. So I go to neutral. That's not what the book says to do, but that's what I do. Neutral. Oh, whoa. oh that's nice. nice for a neutral. There you go. Oh! Holy shit! That's PB in the boat for sure. There's the hook. It just came out. Oh. Um, so lastly, let's talk about the regulations. When the season starts, uh, this year and last year has been 24 inch minimum. And then as the season progresses, it turns into 20 inch minimum. Um, you have to use barbless hooks, one rod. You, uh, you don't, if you catch a fish that's undersized, don't bring it in the boat. You hold it off to the side and release it, let it go in, don't touch it. It's a tiny little one. Yeah, don't net it, you have to let it go. Um, you know, if it's close, do the best you can. Quickly measure it. If it's short, get it back in. Um, if it's close and it's of size, don't release it. It's, it's bad etiquette. Uh, the good chance it's gonna die. Um, so you caught a salmon, keep it. Sorry, it's, it's not a big one, but a lot of the times the fish are kind of the same size in the schools. Um, so it's not like you guaranteed to go catch a big one anyway. Uh, so if you keep a fish on board and it's legal size, keep it, don't release it. There are two types of salmon along the California coast. You have the king salmon and the silver salmon. You're not allowed to keep a silver salmon. They're endangered and the population's low. You can only keep a king salmon. It's very important to understand that. And the most common way to identify them is through the mouth. You can see the black mouth on the king salmon and the white mouth on the silver salmon. If you ever catch a salmon out there, the white mouth, be very careful with it and let it go. So these are my tips, my tricks. This is what I do when I'm out there. By no means am I an expert. This is just what I do. It catches salmon. Um, I would encourage you to check out my other videos. I have a lot of them where I'm catching salmon. I started making these videos last September, so I was a little late to adding on a lot of the ocean ones, but I do have some river ones and a few ocean ones. Especially my first one with the underwater footage is really cool. Um, so if you haven't already, please subscribe to my channel. I really appreciate everyone who does that. And uh, yeah, can't wait for the salmon season. Stay tuned, there'll be some cool videos.